All right, we're now very pleased to welcome on this week's Behind the Blog. It's Derek Lee. You can follow him on Twitter at DLee075. He's a prospect analyst with Future Watch and the co-host of the Future Sickos podcast and a friend of the show here on LOSP. Derek, welcome back, man. How are you doing? Man, I'm doing great. What a what a summer it's been for us. Uh, what a time to kind of celebrate all the W's that Pierre keeps uh, piling up for us. Um, yeah, I couldn't be doing better, man. How about yourself? Oh, I'm, I'm right in the same boat with you. The excitement that this upcoming week rookies will report. We're going to have live mm-hmm. Senators hockey less than a week away, albeit the prospects, but it's still good to keep tabs on that. I know you and I in particular uh, have a fond liking to, to the prospect game and, and development curves and all that. We'll get into what you've done, kind of evolutionizing what was initial prospect analyst to then really d- digging deep into certain individuals and different ways of assessing how their performance is going to come through the years. But we got to start out with uh, with the news of the day or this past week. Where were you when you found out about the Tim Stutzla extension and, and what was your initial reaction? Yeah, man, I was uh, I was at work all day um, and I was actually doing interviews uh, for people at my job. And uh, uh, unfortunately, I wasn't really paying too much attention to their answers because uh, I was looking at my phone and um, they probably thought I was a bit of an asshole, like, you know, wasn't paying attention at all, seeing the news. And at first uh, someone texted me, I think it was Brennan that texted me uh, with the news. And I thought he was just like kind of fucking with me. So I just kind of ignored it. And then I turned on Twitter real quick and I was like, holy shit, like they actually did that. Um, and, and the way that they did it too, you know, with Pierre sort of out of the blue impromptu announcement with Stutzla on stage. Um, what a, what a cool way to bring that about and what a way to cap off the summer. Like unbelievable 8.35. I think it's going to be a steal. Unbelievable. Especially when the uh, when the cap inevitably goes up in the next two three years, you're going to start seeing guys sign for for nine million regularly. I would imagine, at least, yeah. they're based on on how well the revenue's been over the last two years, recovering from the pandemic. I think much quicker than they had anticipated from a league standpoint. But awesome news, yeah. As a, as a Sens fan, you can't help but be excited. Now everyone knows you from Future Sickos podcast. Last year, you guys had Brady on. You guys. Uh, have certainly made made your mark and you can go subscribe on YouTube to the Future Sickos podcast. How did you get the idea for the name? Because you actually wind me back a little bit further than that because you'd popped up now and again through through different podcasts and different ways of communicating your love for the Senators. So how did it, it all start in the content game? And then we'll get in more so to the Future Sickos and where it's going this upcoming season. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so for me, uh, personally, it started back with uh, a blog called SendShot. Um, I think they're still actually operating. I'm not too sure. I have to check in on that, to be honest with you. But uh, uh, but yeah, they gave me the opportunity and a, and a voice to sort of uh, just to write. Um, so I started writing some blogs and uh, ended up writing a story about the uh, 2D logo that kind of... <laughs> Got a bit of controversy uh, surrounding it with uh, Haley Salvian, like wrote a piece kind of right after it. And then people were going after Haley, who's a professional at what she does for, you know, saying that she she copied my article or whatever. And and for me, I was writing it from a fan perspective and just happened to stumble on, you know, a good source that leaked some information about the 2D logo coming out. And um, that's where things kind of started for me. Um so it evolved from there. And then I went, uh, actually went on your show as a Send Central citizen. Uh, citizen. Yeah. It kind of got me thinking like, man, maybe I can, um, you know, kind of profess my love for the senators by talking about them more regularly. Uh, so from there, I went uh, and worked with the Hockey Podcast Network doing a show called Sends Hour. Uh, did that for a little while with, uh, with Shane Ryan who does some cool graphic work. Uh, you can see some of his work on Twitter. Um, and uh, and from there to New Era Sends, which was something that sort of spiraled about a little bit with a group of guys. That's where Brennan and I met and we collaborated on a few articles that we wrote together. And uh, we kind of hit it off, became friends. And it was actually his idea, the future sickos. That's where future sickos evolved um, out of that friendship. And he came to me with the idea. And at first I was like, yeah, 
like I don't have the time and that sort of thing. But uh, but the more we got talking about it, the more it was like, yeah, this makes sense. Like, uh, you know, let's go in and, and see what we could do. Um, and it was always, I think I mentioned before to you, but it, it was always meant to be sort of prospect focused, um, which is like the future sickos part of that. Um, so that was always our idea. Um, but it, it kind of morphed into more of a sends podcast when we started getting, um, you know, some guys on the show, like, like Brady and Pierre and, um, you know, some, some people that we really wanted to talk to and you guys could relate to that, of course. Um, so that's where it, uh, it morphed into um, so then then we created future watch last year and that's where we really started getting into the prospect analysis and partnering up with instat which enabled us to look at the scouting videos so um, so that's where we're at right now we've got uh, both of those things running and we partnered up with dine sports as well so uh, lots of partnerships and that's why i keep probably popping up everywhere and sort of spamming twitter all the time Oh, no, you're a great guy, man. One of the good ones. I appreciate that story too. It just means that you have the love for it and it's it's wherever you can get your fix for it, you're all in. And I want to rewind you to, to when you said Instat. Um, to explain, yeah. I think I have a very basic understanding, but explain to the average person just how powerful this tool is when it comes to tracking oh. players. Um, it makes it easy for dummies like me. Um, you know, you could go basically go on Instat and, and what a tool it is like this is so this is what um, every NHL team uses um, as their scouting tool, whether it's pro scouting, amateur scouting, you could type in any player in any league um, ever, basically, and watch all of their clips. So I could break down if I want just their shifts. Um, so, for example, Alex DeBrinket, who was just traded to Ottawa, I could type, type in Alex DeBrinket, and instead of watching back hours and hours of game, I could just break down just to his shifts. So I can watch like 17 minutes a night, and I can watch a full game of Alex DeBrinket. So I was able to watch like his full season last year, where you wouldn't have the capability of doing that elsewhere. But you can also, you know, use your filters and type in kind of whatever you're looking for. So if you want to see um, Nikita Zaitsev ice the puck, for example, you could type in Nikita Zaitsev icings and boom, there you go. Every single icing from the season, um, every hit you want to see Brady Kachuk throw, a, throw a mean hit, or you want to see him fight somebody, or, um, you want to see him in a scrum in front of the net. Like you could use those filters and it will take you right to those clips. So it really is a, a state of the art kind of amazing tool. And it's so easy to use. How do they track all that? Is is there like a, a staff that does it or is it all all done through um, like robots, I guess? <laughs> Man, your your question is uh, the same question that I have. I have no idea if they're staffing this with like 100,000 right. people. I, I'm thinking <laughs> it's algorithms. To. Like it yeah. has to be sort of algorithms and they're buying the video from the NHL and from all these right. different leagues, like European leagues and um, you name it. Like I said, every single league, every player, um, you know, that you could think of is on Instat. Uh, now, the, the other part to it is it, it's very pricey. So it's well, over $5,000 like annually for a subscription to Instat per person. So it's a, a very pricey uh, tool to use, but it's also like the best tool ever. Once you yeah. have it, you can't live without it. Right. I know. I'd imagine so. Five thousand dollars a year. It's five five G's a year. Um, actually, it might even be a little bit more than that. But uh, you know, we're thankful for um, the people that we work for uh, to to pay that for us. No there's doubt. no way you know someone on my salary is uh, is paying that. So um, no, that's unreal. So we're super thankful. Yeah, I like that, and we appreciate the work that you do because you've turned around some of that video for us to see. Like, how deep would that go? Like during the lock or, or during the lockout during the COVID pause. Could you have gone and watched Rudy Balser's light it up in Denmark? Literally any player, any league. Yeah, you punch in any player. So it makes it really easy. So, uh, you know, it seems so like like it seems so in depth when you watch some of these scouting analysis videos um, that are out there. And really, once you start to learn what you really do to, to come up with the clips, it's not a lot of work like. Right. Once you have Instat, it, it basically does the work for you. Any any dummy, like I said, like myself can go on and just being a fan, you know, I'm no scout or or whatever, just some Joe Blow can go on, punch in the name, uh, 
compile a bunch of clips and talk over them. And, and that's basically all Brennan and I do. Um, we wanted to have, you know, you have the, the big names out there, elite prospects and, and people that uh, if you're really invested in, in prospects, you should follow these guys and really listen to what they're saying. And for us, we wanted something more for the general audience. Uh, you know, some of, some of the more casual prospect fans that want to know quickly, like, you know, what is this guy good at? What does he struggle at? Um, where is he more proficient and where does he need to work, you know, work on to get to the next level? Um, and that's kind of our idea. Just make it kind of simple, um, easy to follow. And from a sort of fan perspective, as, as opposed to a real scouting perspective. And everyone can go over to the future sickos podcast on Twitter or sorry on, well, you can do it on Twitter as well, but I was looking at the YouTube page and you've just incorporated some of these instat clips like all of Alex DeBrinkett's goals from last year and some shift by shift coverage of different 2022 draft eligible players. And that kind of goes in to a bit of everything, right? You've got some like play of the week. You got some, some full episodes, some interviews on there. Where are you planning to take future sickos this upcoming season? Yeah. So uh, we're going to kick things off with a bang. Um, as we uh, just announced on our Twitter page, we have uh, Brady Kachuk coming back to the show to uh, to kick things off. So we're super excited uh, to see the new Budweiser sponsor uh, come on and shoot the shit with us and uh, and just catch up. Um, so this season, um, we're really hoping to uh, to carve our carve out our own niche. We know that uh, that you guys do some incredible work, and uh, we could never replicate you know sort of that day to day dedication that you guys have and. And then there's Wally and Meth and, and Sens Talk and so many different, you know, podcasts in this market uh, that do such a great job. So uh, so we're lo looking to um, uh, to look for more of like a like pregame episodes um, and then kind of one big interview every other week sort of thing. Um, and we're going to go from there and and we'll probably do some some fun things along the way. We've got our producer, Tyler, coming back. So. Uh, we couldn't be more thrilled about that. We think he's the absolute best in the business at uh, at what he does. So, um, really similar work to uh, to what Craig does with uh, with Wally and Mathot. Like this guy is a friggin' genius at what he does. How he's able to uh, to make a sound and and you know add clips in here and there and uh, really work that video editing. So uh, we're excited to have Tyler back on our team. I've heard a few names you've mentioned so far. And just like we did with Sense Talk, like there, there's a whole team behind behind the faces of you and Brennan on there. So so run me yeah. through all the guys who are associated with uh, Future Sickos. Obviously, Jack Richardson, we just did in, in episode one of this. Yeah, not everyone gets the, I guess, gets the uh, the credit for it, but there is more people behind it uh, than, than kind of what meets the eye. But The uh, way I'll ask, Derek, how many people have the password to Future Sickos on Twitter? <laughs> Um, actually just, um, just Brennan, myself and Jack, uh, have the, the, uh, Twitter password, but, but we do have other people running. So we have Nick Dumoulin who runs our Instagram account, um, does, Up, uh, upcoming, a graphic uh, work, upcoming Sun Central citizen, Nick Dumoulin. Just there you go. Out there him. you go. Nick Dumoulin. So, uh, check him out for sure. Uh, we have, uh, Nick Robinson who, joins Jack and, uh, and does like, they, they kind of work as a, uh, a duo and they're both like, they're both going to school for this. They're both far more talented than Brennan and I, like we're more than happy to sort of hand over the reins to these guys because they're, um, they're younger, they're motivated, like they're hungry. Um, and, and we're more, you know, sort of focused on this as a hobby where, um, these guys are taking it serious. Like Jack, you just had on your show, uh, a few episodes ago, outstanding. Can't say enough good things about Jack and and Nick as well. Uh, Nick does some broadcasting, so uh, he's got a pretty unique back background as well. He he does some play by play, which is cool. I know you're into that sort of thing as well, Ross. So um, it's uh, yeah, we we've got a great team. Uh, Jack, Nick, Nick, myself, Brennan. Um, there's definitely more people. Uh, Jeez, I'm going to miss some people that are on the team and I'm going to feel bad for it. But uh, but uh, it, it's just a wonderful group of guys. Uh, we try to get together at Sens games kind of as much as we can uh, as a unit and, and kind of meet up and go out for dinner and, and hang out uh, outside of that as well. So Very cool, man. I, I love the, the, the way that you're not only trying to 
find a niche, but you guys are all bringing different things to the table. And, and I'm sure that's helpful when it comes to getting ideas out. And obviously it's an exciting time to be covering this team. What are your thoughts on what's going on on the ice? We talked about the summer, but I want to approach it this way. Training camp mm-hmm. battles. Do you have anybody circled as maybe a dark horse to make this team? Yeah, I mean, I, I think what's interesting about this year is that there's probably, you know, very little holes and very little um, sort of uh, training camp battles that can legitimately earn a spot. But, it, but you know, one thing that's sort of not really spoken about is Alex Formanton doesn't have a contract. So there is a potential spot there. And I'm looking at, you know, the World Juniors that just happened and seeing what Ridley Gregg did also reading between the lines a little bit about you know where the organization views Ridley Gregg I would say that he has a he has a spot um, potentially on that third line if Formanton's deal doesn't get done before the season or you know whatever happens with uh, the investigations that need to take place but uh, you know he's a guy that I would look for Uh, also I think uh, Mark Kastelik is a really uh, you know, bulldog like player who could play uh, a role on the fourth line, who I think would be a, a really good fourth line center. Great on the face offs, um, does a lot of things well, good details to his game, works extremely hard. Um, so he's a guy that uh, actually I've heard from other uh, Belleville players that they don't want to mess with. Like this guy is tough as nails. Um, so he's a guy that sort of fits again, like Sen's philosophy. Uh, basically the way they built things being hard to play against. So I think he's a guy that would fit in, you know, Ridley Gregg, of course, would fit in. Um, Dark Horse, uh, we can't leave out our boy Igor Sokolov, Um, you know, Dark Horse to make the team. And the nice thing with Matthew Joseph is he can flip-flop, right? Like he could play the right side, he could play the left side. So wherever that hole is that you see, um, you know, if it's Sokolov coming in to play the right side, you can have Joseph over on the left side. So um, there's there's a few guys that are right on that bubble. I, I will give one more little shout out to Angus Crookshank because I think uh, another dark horse who um, we we didn't really see what he could do. He had an injury riddled season, so he could come back and make a make a push too in training camp. All of these guys have the same sort of uh, work horse like mentality, um, and I think that's the way the Sens have drafted. Yeah, super interesting there too when it comes to uh, the flexibility that a few of their forwards have where they can play lefty, righty, or um, or you know move up maybe into more of a scoring situation. So I'm fired up for camp. I think DJ Smith has some fascinating decisions to make despite mm-hmm. obviously having the most locked in top nine, um, at least on paper, Alex Formanton being the asterisk there uh, that he's had yeah. since he took over. Who's your favorite random player since the rebuild? I like asking people this where – they, they just always pull out a name where it's like, oh, my God, really? That guy played for the Sens? <laughs> oh, since the since the rebuild. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Um, it's been a revolving door at times. Who's my favorite one? Um, I, I mean, d- do you count Tyler Ennis? Is that, like, too for obvious? Sure. No, okay. no, he's a two-timer. Okay. Yeah, I got to go with with the best to ever do it then, uh, yeah. Tyler Ennis. Um, I'll, I'll I just, go with – I liked go him brought, you know? yeah. He did. I, I'm surprised he hasn't caught on somewhere else. Like um, I was bringing mm-hmm. his name up on Winnipeg radio last week, or I was planning to, and then they ultimately signed Sam Gagne right before he went on air. And I was like, Oh, pretty similar yeah. type player. Very you know, similar. like, like Very veterans, similar. offensive, old, older, <laughs> um, like higher picks, I should say, but have kind of yeah. redefined their game and, and role as they've grown older. But yeah, I'm surprised. I'm sure he'll catch on if it's not a PTO, like, Maybe he'll That's get the uh, the Arizona special there, signed for one year <laughs> down in the desert, whatever it the is. Uh, team. Yeah, you, you say the best ever lace him up. I'll, I'll go to the best player who's played on the Sens during the rebuild, and I don't mean when he was in Ottawa, but as overall careers go, Marion mm-hmm. Gabrick to me was always a guy where it's <laughs> like, and that was early on too. Dion was like the first guy they unloaded, and they brought back yep. Gabrick for what was it, a handful of games. But he was always a guy my neighbor growing up was uh, Slovak, so I always had an affinity for the Slovaks with Hosen and Bondra. So, well, Bondra re, uh, very briefly, but uh, with Hosen and Chara on the Sens all those years. So when I saw Gabrick get in the mix, I, I love that <laughs> one. But those days are long gone, thank God, as, as this is going to be quite the competitive team. And uh, Last thing I want to bring up with you, Derek, when it comes to the, uh, the on-ice portion, the Ottawa Senators, and it's it's maybe a little bit over-discussed, but 
if mm-hmm. they don't bring in another defenseman, how do you roll out the pairs? We know DJ Smith is planning yeah. on starting his top four with Zubin, Shabbat, Hamannick, and Sanderson. But if you are the head coach, how's that whiteboard shaking out first day of camp? Yeah, well, I think this is an interesting question, Ross, because a lot of it is dependent on, like, where is Eric Branstrom at? And I think the contract sort of indicates where the team is at with Eric Branstrom. He needs to come in and sort of prove it. Um, But I think the opportunity for Eric Branstrom to take a big step is this year, um, even though we've been saying it every year, I think it's this year because all of the attention, you know, and this guy's had a lot of attention on him. He came over for Mark Stone, like the spotlight's sort of been on him. People viewed him as a potential savior on the blue line. This is the year where he's like buried down the depth chart. Like he might not even start on the opening uh, night roster. So this is an opportunity for him to come to camp and prove himself. Um, so, you know, I, I'm open to him playing the right side. I think um, that would make things really interesting if you're looking at the current roster, sort of the way it's constructed without uh, adding anyone else in. Um, so I would say uh, let's let's have some fun with it and go uh, Shabbat with Brandstrom. Um, and then Sanderson and Zub seems like the most likely second pairing um, provided that both Sanderson and Branstrom would make the team. And then you'd have uh, Holden and Hamannick as your bottom pairing with uh, Zaitsev uh, hopefully being in somewhere else. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Just not on the Ottawa Senators. <laughs> no, I, I like that. The defense for me is, is what I'm going to be watching throughout training camp because the the real dark horses for me to make the team is JVD and Lassie. And like, can they sneak away and like well, earn a job and, and be make it really, really hard and no, they well, neither needs waivers, and that's where they kind of have the outside looking in. But I, I like their chances if they come into camp ready. That's another interesting storyline, right? Like these guys are no longer super young. Like at some point, you know, at some point, JBD's got to make that leap, and um, and Thompson as well. So uh, I, I would say, and and they're very different players, right? Like JBD is more. Uh, I would compare him to like Dylan Demello, like very quiet. He's not going to overpower you physically, but he does everything well. Um, and he's just sort of a quiet, defensive-minded guy who can probably complement a top four player because he can move the puck well and sort of keep pace. And Thompson's a little bit more probably higher projected offensive ceiling with a little bit more uncertainty uh, from the defensive side. So, um, yeah, th- those are really intriguing players. Like that's uh, that's an interesting debate too. I think uh, in terms of training camp battles, like you mentioned earlier, that is one that could surprise us, right? Like maybe one of these guys comes to camp, maybe JBD comes to camp and he's like, no, like I'm ready to make the team now and you have to give me a spot now. And uh, and that would be like best case scenario for the senders because yeah. that's, you know, the one the one sort of hole coming into the season that everyone's aware of is on the back end potentially. Um, But there's so many young players there that, you know, potentially it's not really a hole. If one of these players are ready, maybe they'll take a big step. It's going to be fantastic. And it all starts this upcoming weekend when I'd imagine Lassie and JBD, maybe not, maybe they're graduate. You think they're going to be at the rookie tournament? Um. There's a lot of defense when like Hamara's gonna be there. Um Romeo kind of done that, right? Like they Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're probably beyond it, eh? Like even even a couple of the two thousand or twenty draft is is already graduated from that. So Yeah, it doesn't last too long. Like because mm-hmm. they've got, you know, training camp on top on top of yeah. training camp. It's yeah. more like for the developmental, I, I think Sandy's going to be there though. From what I've, from what I've heard, I would imagine so. So yeah, let's, let's run through it. And Jory and Donovan would be another one. So like there's five D right yep. there. So yep. you're already starting to, to cut pretty thin. That, that makes a lot of sense. Yep. You know, it's crazy. We still haven't seen Tyler Clevin wear a sense jersey. He hasn't been to a development camp because of COVID. And then this year, the unfortunate passing in his family. So he had to miss that one. Yeah, and then they can't, right. they can't come to uh to regular camp. So, that's just uh, kind of a product of the pandemic. But, hey, at least he's got three guys to call who can be like, hey, there, this isn't made up. Like, there's a real NHL <laughs> team here. And one day, hopefully, the, you're wearing the jersey as well. Uh, no, yeah, that's, another that's guy who probably good. fits into their long-term plans, right? Like uh, another mm-hmm. guy who you could project, pretty yeah. safely project as a bottom pairing D who provides, like, you, you could – that's a tough thing with JVD, right? It's like what what defines him? Um, you know, I don't, I don't really know yet uh, – 
same with Brandstrom. Like, is he an offensive defenseman? I don't know. Cause right now he's an offensive defenseman without the offense. Yeah. Um, whereas like Tyler Clevin, we know what he is. Like he's, he's a hurt, kind of bottom you. pairing D that can hurt you if you make the wrong move. Yeah. You have to know when he's on the ice. That's for sure. Choo choo. Um, okay. <laughs> let's brainstorm here. Future sickos podcast. You can follow them on YouTube, on Twitter, pregame shows. Are you guys going to have all hands on decks? You know what I think would be a great idea? Because, yeah, it's yeah, easy to just jump there. on, shoot the breeze, but let's brainstorm here. What if yeah. it was like, you know, like those NFL Sunday countdown shows? Like they've got little segments within it. You guys have the manpower. Why don't like someone actually like host it, like anchors a show, and you like throw to this guy and then throw to that guy? I think you could have some fun with it. I, I like your thinking, Ross. I think, um, you know, I think right now it's set up to be Jack – and Nick um, running with our pregame shows, but um, but we're yeah we're definitely open to some ideas. Like you guys, yeah. uh, you guys have a good thing going. So if you have some good ideas, like cascade them down to us. And um, I, I like that idea a lot. Well, actually. yeah, like I mean, and if you're busy at the time, like what we've really learned and leaned on. This is kind of what what behind the blog is all about, peeling back the curtain. Like what Pilsy and I will do is we're putting out a video seven days a week right now. But what we'll do is yeah. I'll sit down and I'll record two interviews with them, then record a podcast, then record the value rankings. And then I upload them and I schedule them. And then for two days, I don't do anything, but there's still a new video coming out. So there's just ways where you can live in the future a little bit and plan yeah. out. Like I'm, I'm away right now. <laughs> Did I just blow your mind? Yes. You as you're watching this, I am <laughs> away. But again, you're getting it now. So I'm thinking like if those boys are hosting it, then throughout the day or two before, let's say somebody checks in on the lineup. It's kind of like what a radio show would do. Like they go see Dean Brown, Gore Wilson. They get their little yep. tape. So, yeah, you could have a little feature done up on, on like a spotlight guy. Boom, you send that in. And they just hit play and sound on tape. Away you go. I think we're on I love the here. idea. I love the idea. Like I think uh... – well, I'll bring it up with them. Let's see. I'm an even know, more – I'm an even more of an ideas guy when I know I'm not going to have to execute it. <laughs> it's easier that way eh? hell yeah but yeah we like we uh we plan on like utilizing uh as i was mentioning earlier like instat to bring in some clips and right that sort of thing since it's going to be accessible to us we might as well East do it and we have our producer back so i want to be tuned into this because we do the postcast but i want to, i want to see this pregame show i want to be a, a part of the audience so yeah you guys have uh i think you're on to something here yeah, man. And, and like, you know, like fan engagement is the most important thing to us. So it's about it really is about catering to whatever people want to hear and whatever mm -hmm. people want to listen to. And that's what we want to provide to uh, to people. So, um, you know, having call ins like that was another idea that we had, you know, people yeah, call in, cool. and, you know, come up with a question or a comment or whatever they want to say or, or tell us we're really shitty at uh, breaking down the game or whatever it is that people want to say. Right. Like they can come in and, and have that. Uh, a couple of minutes to do it and is it in a perfect world like i feel like over the years too with everything you've done you kind of prefer doing the live streams like pilsy and i will always record we pretty much record like it's live like i think it's pretty rare that you're going to see a cut although everyone can go have a laugh if you missed organizational value rankings tier one we we're we we're taking a little bit longer shocker getting through it and uh <laughs> we had an interview coming up so i we paused it or like stopped the recording i put it together and I forgot to change back to what I was wearing. So all of a sudden in the video, I, I, it just comes back to me oh, and I'm yeah. wearing a different shirt. It looks absolutely ridiculous. But I guess that's who we're playing with fire when we're when we're time traveling like that. But it's all in good fun. Uh, but no, but the point of that, all that bl blabbering was, was um, is it going to be live? Like, is that something you want to do as a live stream leading up to the game? Yeah. So the, the pre games will be kind of live streamed. Um, right. Because there's no we, use. Got to find late. the right platform to make it interactive. Yeah, but, I was just gonna uh, say if you're late to to upload it, I, that's the type of thing that's gonna age pretty quickly. Whereas I think as a live stream, it does extremely well because everyone's looking for that fix. When uh, even if people are at the game, between when the zamboni comes off for for warm up, you got 18 minutes to to get yeah. in there. So I think that that's a great way to go about it. Yeah, exactly. And check checking in on sort of the latest information, like you talked about, like who's checking into the lineup. Is there anybody injured? You know, whatever, uh, whatever Has they want to do. Left warm gonna... ups with injury. <laughs> well, that's not our problem anymore. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, that'll be interesting. 
What uh, is there a game coming up? Final thing I want to ask you here, Derek, and I appreciate your time. And, and we, we have been fans of yours for a long time, Pillsy and I, and he wished he could be here next time. We'll have you on, by the way, did you have any idea how well that mock draft would do the last time you came on? We were shocked. We thought it would get like a couple thousand that, that hit the jackpot. That was amazing. Like I, I, I can't believe, I mean, the amount of viewership, um, I can believe it though. Like you guys, you guys advertised well for it. Like you put in the work, right. And you got a lot of good people. Like I'm not talking about myself, but you got a lot of people that know what they're talking about that people genuinely wanted to know about the draft. And it was, mm -hmm. uh, it was so well put together, man. I, I think was... we did good on the timing, but dude, that got 18 times our best. Like not, That's not insane. like our average, like our best. It hit Anyways. that algorithm. Eh? Sometimes they hit the right algorithm and they just go crazy. Yeah. The mock drafts are one, two all time videos. People love mock drafts. They love that stuff. Love. And they're hours long, right? Like they're not, uh, Four you know, half hours. I'm, I know I'm thinking like, oh yeah, like everyone's, uh, you know, super stimulated these days. They need like quick time, short clips and whatnot. But people that are really invested in this stuff will watch a four hour mock draft. Like, I absolutely love it. And you know what made yeah. it a lot easier too is people being able to have the apps on their TVs more and more commonly because then they can actually like sit on their couch and you're not staring at a 16 or 18 inch screen. You're actually able to, you know, grab popcorn and it's like watching cable or watching a movie. So, um, yeah. you know, I, I see you that. You but... talk with people as you have, have it on kind of thing. Yeah it's, yeah, it's more interactive that way. You're right. No, 100%. That's phenomenal though. Oh, dude, it, it was awesome. Um, so yeah, we appreciate you being a part of that as well. Um, is the, the last thing I wanted to ask you, is there one particular game, whether it's in October or November, the early part of the season that you're eyeing when it comes to the Ottawa Senators saying, I cannot wait for that night? Um, oh, geez. Uh, I, I really haven't looked far ahead in the schedule, to, if I'm being honest with you, which is like negligence on my part, I should be looking to see if they're <laughs> able to have a, you know, capable of having a hot start, which I think they will have. But I mean, I, I just circled the home opener because uh, we're, we're going, you know, the whole group of us is going to that game. So, um, so against Boston, that'll be just the atmosphere alone, right. will be so fun. It's always fun to play the Leafs and beat them early in the season. Um, it'll be fun lighting up Matt Murray high glove. Like that's going to be something I'm really looking forward to. Um, really there isn't, there isn't a game I'm not looking forward to. Do they play Florida <laughs> though? Do they play Florida early? Yeah. At the, the end of October. Okay. So, I mean, that's one that obviously with the Kachuk brothers, that's always fun. Uh, we always tried to go to the Calgary games before. So I think going to the Florida games now will be a, a, another element of, of fun. They're in the same division It'll be uh, it'll be interesting. Like I, I don't think Brady's gonna go wear a Florida Panthers uh, t-shirt no. um, in the stands if if Ottawa were to be eliminated, um, much like he did with Calgary. It's a little bit different, right? When it's out west, not so much when you're in the same division. Like that's gonna be interesting. Yeah, no doubt. So, well, it's uh, how about yourself? Math. Like, are you are you circling a game? I mean, first I'll just say that it's Matthew's turn. By the way, it's not it's not Brady. He's already done his well, supportive brother thing. So he would, now he would look pretty Matthew. good in a sense tee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with a no couple doubt. Budweisers in the stands, I think that would look pretty good on him. So yeah, no doubt. Um, for me, I mean, obviously the home opener stands out. Um, but for me, I'm looking at uh, the first time we get Gallagher versus Stutzla once again, oh, and yeah, those I games against that. Montreal are always great, and they're really making us wait for it here. Uh, I actually want to get uh, get my facts straight, but um, they play Montreal for the first time in December, December 14th. Oh, so that's yeah. a long way into the season. Game number 29 of the season is against Montreal. And the game after is at Detroit. And Detroit and Ottawa have been so parallel over the last couple of years. And with all their young yeah. prospects come, kind of coming up together, that will begin three games out of seven. Ottawa versus Detroit. So right around that Christmas time, there's going to be some great games, obviously fired up for the game in Winnipeg that'll have, be able to have boots on the ground, especially after the last year's went one, one in the third period, Ottawa explodes for four straight in the mm -hmm. third. Timmy gets a goal and two assists. Brady was unbelievable in that game. And you knew going in Brady's grandparents, his mom's whole side of the family's from Winnipeg. And uh, oh, he, he was saying before, like, the year before, yeah, they went to Winnipeg a lot. It was the Canadian division, but his his grandpa had, couldn't go to the game. So I was like, 
his he's gonna be there. Brady goal is an absolute night. lock, and sure, yeah. sure as hell, like, he got the game opening goal. So that those are some of the games that I'm fired up. But like you, Derek, I think the list is a lot shorter about which games I'm not excited for this upcoming season. They even managed to find a way yeah. to make the Arizona game interesting by making it the first Saturday night home game of the season. I shouldn't even say night; it's at 3 p.m. But uh, it'll yeah. still be fun atmosphere there. So. Uh, yeah, lots of lots of content coming our way with the rookie tournament starting next week, and then the Sens main camp a week after. Derek gave you some dark horses to look at at guys who are going to make the team, and for a lot more of that, go give a follow to the Future Sickos podcast anywhere you get your podcasts, including on YouTube, and you can follow his personal account at dlee 75 It's not going to be too long. We'll absolutely have you on, whether it's the postcast. Or back on the show, but we appreciate you being another member of the Behind the Blog. It was great to get you to peel back the curtain on what you guys do over there at the Sickos. Absolutely, Ross. Thank you so much for having me, man. And say hi to Pilsy when he does come back. <laughs>